and, and I said, Kevin, uh, let's, let's sit, we're going to sit down when I go back and look at, is there a pathway forward? Is there a pathway in bipartisan, bicameral? Both of them come, not in one going one direction, one going the other and fighting it out and conferees and everything. So hopefully that we can recognize that we have a runaway debt. We recognize we're all responsible. And that was West Virginia Democrat Senator Joe Manchin speaking with me last week on the need for a bipartisan solution to rein in the $35.5 trillion national debt. On Wednesday, Manchin met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy for about 30 minutes on raising the debt limit, a meeting that we first exclusively reported was scheduled to take place, with Manchin saying that McCarthy promised there would be no cuts to Social Security or Medicare. Congress is facing an early June deadline when the Treasury Department says it will exhaust all of its options to avoid defaulting on America's debt. Joining me right now is the ranking member of the Senate Joint Economic Committee, Utah Senator Mike Lee, is with me now. Senator, it's good to see you. Thanks very much. Thank How you, do you think this debt showdown will play out in the coming months? Well, I think it'll play out in the sense that we have just had the American people speak. The American people are operating under an uh, oppressive burden. Uh, our $31 trillion-plus national debt uh, is so much larger than our economy that we're having a difficult time keeping up with it. And, Maria, within just a few years, we're going to see our annual interest on debt uh, skyrocket from around $400 billion a year to well over a trillion a yeah. year. And we don't have that kind of money to cover that and everything else, too. So if we don't get ahead of this now, it's going to get ahead of us. And we're all going to suffer as a result. That's why, as Republicans, we're coming together and, and standing by what we as a Senate Republican conference have already uh, embraced as a policy position a long time ago, which is that debt ceiling increases should be accompanied by corresponding cuts to spending and also corresponding structural long-term spending measures. Uh, we hope and, and expect that to be the case. Look, this isn't a, a, a strictly partisan issue over time that Republicans and Democrats acknowledge in like terms, that the national debt is a problem. Way back in 2006, when our national debt was a tiny fraction of what it is now, then Senator Barack Obama voted against raising the debt ceiling. Yeah. So uh, this isn't necessarily a Republican or a Democratic issue. It, it is simply an American issue, and we're fighting for the people on this. Well, we expect the debt ceiling will be going up, given the fact that you're up against the wall again. This happens all the time, where there's no real practical conversation. When you have the time, and then you're dropped with the bomb of, well, we're going to shut down the government if you don't do this today. So when is that, quote, unquote, today going to happen, do you think? Yeah, so as you mentioned, we expect the so-called extraordinary measures used by the Treasury Department to extend the time of the debt ceiling. Uh, uh, up until sometime in early June. I really think we ought to be doing things about this sooner than that. Because uh, once, the, once we blow past the debt ceiling, which should happen in the next few weeks, uh, we're really at the mercy of the Treasury Department. And at any time, they could accelerate or decelerate uh, the, whatever they deem to be the extent of their extraordinary measures, the time period in which they can extend out the debt ceiling by looking, metaphorically speaking, for nickels and dimes under the couch cushions. We ought to be doing this now. And I'd love to see, well before June, uh, Congress pass something and submit it to President Biden so that we can address the issue and move on. Well, do you think that that's going to happen? Or will they tell you right before Memorial Day weekend or July 4th weekend that you need to do this now, otherwise government will go broke? Yeah, you've seized on something fantastic, uh, uh, Maria, uh, fantastically horrible, which is that many in Washington will find ways to delay something until right before a long scheduled recess of the Senate. If they were to draw this out, let's say, until just before the July 4th recess, yeah. uh, you'd have a lot of members scrambling and panicking and perhaps voting for something they wouldn't otherwise vote for. That's why we control our own schedule. The, schedule, the, the executive branch doesn't. We ought to act now. We can do it in a way that really puts us on a better economic footing. Well, let's talk a bit about some of those structural reforms you want to see happen while in the middle of this document scandal. Uh, Senator, you've read uh, uh, documents that are classified in, in the secret skiff that uh, your colleague Ted Cruz was just telling us about. What are your thoughts on this new trove that we're learning about at the University of Delaware and how Joe Biden is handling classified information, which he claims he's uh, very, he takes this very seriously? Well, he should take it seriously. The law takes it very seriously. And the, the punishments for not taking it seriously are great. 
and, and, and those facing the country as a whole are immense. Uh, but here's the deal. Uh, we found recently that uh, President Biden has documents not only from when he was vice president of the United States, but also from the time that he was in the Senate. I was especially surprised by this latter category. As Maria, the, as U.S. senators, there are two ways in which we get to see classified material. The first is to go to a secure facility known as the SCIF. We have one underneath the Capitol it's in a fortified bunker of sorts. You can't bring in any of your devices. You've got to leave all documents that you reviewed in the SCIF at the SCIF. What happens there stays there. The second way, in some circumstances, you can have uh, a, a person with very high clearance bring you the documents you need to see to your office in the Senate. They come in, close the door, nobody else in the room, they take it out of a locked case, allow you to read it. But once you open the case, you may not speak, can't speak about the document while you're looking at it. When you're finished with it, you hand it back to that person, the person yeah. puts it back in a locked case, and he goes away. Under no circumstance does the senator hold on to wow. those classified documents. So it's, I don't even know how he would have done this. It's really scary and confusing to me how that would have even happened. Well, it sounds like Joe Biden's attorney general has a real problem. He wanted to indict Donald Trump for this, but now we see that what Joe Biden has done is uh, much more uh, magnified and worse than what Donald Trump has done because Donald Trump had the Secret Service watching uh, any of these documents. Your thoughts? Uh, yes, that and also the fact that uh, at the time President Trump had those documents, he was the president. The president always has the authority to, to hold the documents and has declassification authority. The vice president does not have declassification authority. So that's an added ripple as well. Real quick, Senator, before you go, you tweeted about Pfizer. We have a comment from Pfizer after that Project Veritas report uh, where they interviewed someone from Pfizer who made the suggestion that they were mutating COVID. Uh, your, your thoughts on this story. Here's a statement from Pfizer. In the ongoing development of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, Pfizer has not conducted gain-of-function or directed evolution research in a limited number of cases when a full virus does not contain any known... We are looking at uh, any known gain-of-function mutation. Such virus may be engineered to enable the assessment of antiviral activity in cells. Are you comfortable with this statement from Pfizer? I know you tweeted about this story. I'm about as comfortable and persuaded by that statement as I would be by the statements of the Pinocchio character in, in Shrek the Third, Shrek Three, as some call it. Look, in that movie, Pinocchio avoids getting in trouble by adding so many caveats to the sentence, you can't really tell what the sentence means anymore. If you read that very same statement that you just read, and you read it in its entirety, it's very difficult to tell what Pfizer is saying. What I don't see Pfizer saying is, we never did gain-of-function research on COVID anywhere ever, ever in connection with anything. You take away the qualifiers, it becomes a little disturbing, and we need more direct answers than this. Are, will you be reaching out to Pfizer? Absolutely. What do you mean? You're going to have them come in and speak to your, your committee? Uh, so we can either have them come in and speak to any of the committees I ser serve on or any of the other Senate committees. Or if they'd like, they can issue a more public statement. They can come and brief all of us. I'll take their answers in whatever form they want to submit them. But they need okay. to be answers, and they need to be simple and accurate. Senator, thank you. We'll be watching that. Senator Mike Lee, thank we'll you. be right back.